You've heard over and over about the increase in RV ownership over the last year without a whole lot of specific numbers to back it up. Well, now we have some, and RV owners might not be who you think they are. I'm Jason Eppers, and this is RV Miles. Here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news and what you, the consumer, might want to know about. RV ownership has been rapidly growing for the past 20 years, with a big dip around the time of the recession that began in earnest in 2009. It's a cyclical business, generally very reactive to economic pressures. When more Americans have cash, more Americans buy RVs. But the world is changing, and now RVs come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and price tags. The pandemic surely has more people interested in RVing. But also, the largest cohort of baby boomers are reaching retirement age, and changes in the workplace have more people able to work from anywhere. So it's not all just pandemic-related. And now Go RVing, the marketing arm for the RV Industry Association, has released an RV owner demographic profile, which it says is the most comprehensive study of RV ownership ever conducted. 6.9 million American households owned RVs 20 years ago. There were 8.9 million 10 years ago. Now, 11.2 million households own RVs. Additionally, an incredible 9.6 million households intend to buy an RV within the next five years. So if you think that there's a big glut of used RVs about to hit the market, there might be quite a bit more to the picture. The demographics of those RV owners have changed too. And now for the very first time, the majority of RV owners, 51%, are under the age of 55. 18 to 34 year olds make up 22% of the market. We've also been hearing a lot about how owners are using their RVs more, booking more nights and traveling longer due to more flexible workplaces and the growing gig economy. But the report says that the median annual usage for current RV owners actually hasn't changed in the last 10 years, steady at 20 days. People intending to buy an RV, however, plan to use their RVs for a median of 25 days a year. Medians aren't averages, of course, and it may be just the case that the median remains the same while the average increases with more RV power users spending more time camping. Nearly a third of the respondents in the survey 31% are first-time owners, underscoring the growth of the industry in the past decade. Ownership has also spread more and more widely, not only across age levels, but also across genders, as well as household income and education levels. A couple years ago, the RV Industry Association began breaking people down into different affinity groups, or people who use their RVs in different ways. And this report drills down into more and more detail about these affinity groups. We'll get to that in a second, but first, this video is sponsored by the Togo RV app. If you're looking for route navigation on your phone that takes into account the length and height of your RV, look no further than the Togo RV app, which also includes checklists, maintenance reminders, and recall alerts for your specific RV and more. The app is free, but a $39 per year Togo RV Plus membership gives you full access to the navigation features, plus my favorite trip planning software, Road Trippers Plus. You can get $10 off with the code in the description below. The biggest category of RV owners, 39%, the industry calls casual campers. These folks use their RVs 16 days on average per year, mostly a few weekends a year in the warmer months. The vast majority of this group are over 55 and earn less than $65,000 a year in annual household income. The next biggest at 33% are called family campers, mostly people who live with children. They use their RVs even less 13 days a year. Most make over 65,000. 16% of RVers use their rigs around two months out of the year or 55 days on average. These escapists are truly committed to the RV lifestyle and are about evenly split among young and old. 6% of owners are what the industry calls avid RVers, using their rigs for the length of approximately a season. They're mostly over 55, mostly women, and unlike most RVers whose primary hobbies are camping, fishing, and hiking, these folks enjoy walking, cooking, and gardening. 3% of RVers use their RV for half of the year, mostly snowbirds heading south for the winter, and mostly without children at home and 1.5% of all RVers are full-time. That's 168,000 RVs, which is way less than I thought and way less than has been previously reported, to be honest. 
Though I wonder if the survey is flawed by calling landline phones or something. Either way, the interesting thing here is that 70% of full-timers are women and only 11% have no children at home, which is another number I find suspect as 43% identified as retired, but nonetheless. A further 1% use their RV most of the time, about 200 days out of the year. Surveys like this are always full of flaws and there are a lot of ways to break down numbers, but it's very clear that RVing has become much less of a niche form of travel enjoyed by only retirees and is now more of a mainstream lifestyle that is enjoyed by a full 10% of American households. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. As always, if you got something out of this video, please hit the like button. If you want more like it, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And now we're gonna wrap this video up with some comments from our last RV News video. Increased demand and production equals higher prices with lower quality. Yeah, but also production hasn't increased as much as the industry would like due to the fact that there are still supply chain issues backing things up. Great video. Thanks for all you do for us. Hashtag RV miles rocks. Yes, let's use that hashtag more. You should really do a story about how there is no available overnight parking when you travel. We need overnight rest areas. States need to step up. I'll look into that some more, but I couldn't agree with you more. Does that RV chart reflect the used market as well? I noticed that Class A sales are actually down. I wonder why. Class A RVs take longer to build and they're not as easy to ramp up in production. So it's not as easy for them to sort of scale and meet more demand with Class A's. That and motorhome ownership is trending downwards. It's not reducing, but as an overall piece of the pie, more people are buying trailers because more people own trucks now. And here's a comment from our friend Josh the RV Nerd over at Halet RV, an excellent channel that you should watch and follow. The demand is most certainly there. My concern is that I don't see how the RV industry will be able to physically supply the demand again this season. I personally project 2021's total sales to be slightly lower than 2020, which is not what the industry is saying, but not for a lack of trying, just a lack of inventory. Again, this is a dealer talking here. It's a theory, of course. There are a lot of variables out there. Right now, we're facing shortages we've never seen before, such as nose and tail caps for RVs, as the fiberglass used for them is simply not available. We're always one natural disaster away from something like Luon, which is a thin plywood that's used extensively in the RV industry, being consumed completely by the housing industry. I'm extremely optimistic for another good year and really interested to see how it pans out. Thanks a lot for commenting, Josh, and thanks for anybody else who comments. I'll try to get to some of your comments on this video on the next one. See you next time.